Here's our uh, Mission Blonde, and uh, it's a Kolsch style ale that originates from Germany. Um, it's an interesting beer. It's you know, it's relatively light in color and body. Um, it's crisp. It's kind of like in between a, an ale and a, and a lager, and it has characteristics from both. It's refreshing, and enjoyable. Um, great beer for summertime. Great beer for great daytime beer in uh -huh. general. Um, but can be very much enjoyed in the evening as well. <laughs> or in the middle of the day, yeah? Uh, or in the or breakfast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, whereas like typical ales you're going to ferment in the high 60s, this is in the low 60s. Um, after fermentation, we give it kind of like a lagering time, um, right. about 40 degrees for several days, and then we cool it down, we crash it to uh, 36 and let it lager. Kind of, let it kind of lager for. Um, couple weeks if we can. So what do you get on the nose when you... Uh, it's got, it's, uh, it's interesting, it's kind of, um, I mean you get some, uh, we use some noble hops in here from Germany, um, so you definitely, you know, you've got that noble hoppiness, kind of like you'd have in a, in a lager, uh, or like a pilsner, um, but there's also subtle fruitiness that comes from the yeast, um, and it's, it's an authentic Kolsch yeast. So it's gonna, it's a really clean fermenting yeast, but it's got that little fruitiness to a actually give it a little more character and uh, make it a little more interesting. But this one's got a nice, it's got a great balance to it, you know, that's got a crisp, crispness from the, kind of like the hops um, intermingling with the yeast. This is our uh, Mission Hef. Um, yeah. It's a Bavarian style, have a bison. Uh, it's heavy on the banana, clove notes. Um, it's got a lot of yeast in it. This sample in particular is pretty yeasty right now, but it's fresh keg, so we're gonna have some more yeast in the bottom of it. But um, it's really enjoyable. I've uh, come to really appreciate this beer a lot, and uh, I love drinking it. Um, it's almost like banana candy at times. Uh -huh. um, a little bit of clove, a um, little banana, a little bubble gum. All in all, very refreshing. Um, a lot of people think that you know these kind of beers will have fruit in them because they're so there's so much of that character, but there's there's no fruit added whatsoever. And uh, the style of the Bavarian style Hefeweizen differs from your standard American wheat in that by the yeast strain in particular. Um, this is a much more flavorful yeast strain, and so compared to a lot of uh, a lot of uh, domestically made Hefeweizens um, that are more of a neutral, uh, neutral in general. Um, this one's got a lot of flavor. We've got our Mission IPA, India Pale Ale. Um, it's a pretty looking beer. Yeah. Nice on it. Big, uh, big, big citrus uh, aroma. Tastes pretty awesome too. Um, we use a lot of uh, Cascade and Centennial hops in this IPA. Yeah, big, big citrus uh, aroma uh, and flavor, you know, from the hops. Um, it's bitter, but it's not overly bitter. Some IPAs are completely uh, destructive of the palate, as you might say. Um, but this one is, uh, I, I enjoy the balance in this beer quite a bit. Um, I'm a hop head myself, so yeah. you know I could, I could, uh, I could throw another three pounds per barrel in this and be happy with it. Um, well, we hop it in the kettle um, a couple times in the kettle, end of the boil, um, a lot of hops in the whirlpool, and then we dry hop it as well. And uh, after dry hopping, I like to let it sit for at least a week, uh -huh. preferably up to you know. 10 to 14 days if, if possible and uh, it just kind of the flavors just kind of meld and everything just kind of seems to come together with it a lot better um, we've actually uh, we've, we've, ferment, we've, we've made this beer and fermented it with our uh, with our Kolsch yeast um, and we've also used a uh, more neutral California ale yeast um, and so there's different, uh, the, the similarities and the differences of the, between those two yeast strains are, are noticeable, uh -huh. but um, I don't know how noticeable to everyone, 
to me, I can pick them out, and I, I really haven't been able to decide yet which uh, which one I like better. Hmm. So um, it's kind of fun playing around like that, and, um, but still keeping the beer within the, the parameters that we needed to we need to keep it. What are some of the subtle differences that you notice between the Kolsch yeast and the the other? Um, what was the other yeast strain? It's like a California ale yeast, uh-huh. which is you know one of the most popular right. yeast strains that brewers use. Um, you know, it's funny because it seems that using uh, using the, the California ale yeast, the beer itself, um, it seems a little bit hoppier, but um, almost in a different way. Uh, with, with the Kolsch yeast, um, there's almost like a hop flavor that comes out that's uh, more resinous, mm-hmm. as you might say. Um, the only thing I can really compare it to would be the smell of going into the, the baling room at the hop yard um, or where they, they bale the hops and then they move them into storage into another room and uh, there's the, the hops are off-gassing mm-hmm. and um, I don't know the exact compound but it seems that that uh, flavor kind of presents itself in the, with the Kolsch yeast whereas with the other the California ale yeast it's more of a it's more of like everything's uh, harder to identify, but kind of blended together. Uh-huh. I don't know. Ah, interesting. If I could sum it up like that. Yeah, no, it's, it's that's interesting. It's a shot. Okay. This is a shipwrecked or double IPA. Yep. Um, this is the monster beer that we have on our lineup right now, and there's more to come for sure. But uh, it's double IPA. It's nine and a quarter percent alcohol. I think. Uh, I think it's in the high 70s for IBUs, so once again, it's not uh, as hugely bitter. Right. It's bitter, but it's not overly bitter. Um, it's got a nice balance to it. Uh, it's dangerously easy to drink. That's the that's the thing about this beer. You know, some people come in and they can have have a pint and two pints, and then they stand up and they realize that it's that's the wrecked part of shipwreck. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of the same hops that go under IPA we use in the Shipwrecked um, with the addition of uh, the CTZs, which is uh, Columbus hops, um, and we use those uh, a lot of those in the dry hop on this beer. Um, this beer has got a little bit more of a malt character kind of to balance out the bitterness and the high alcohol, so we throw in a little bit uh, some darker specialty malts, uh-huh. crystal malt, um, in the grist to... Uh, to give it that character. Uh, the one really cool thing about this beer is that um, you can uh, you can take a bottle fresh and uh, sit it down in a cooler or in your fridge for a month or two months and pop it open and drink it and it's still going to be really tasty and enjoyable. And over the course of a couple months it almost kind of morphs into a barley wine. Which really? Is, you know, which is something that um, I kind of I, I, I enjoy about uh, double IPAs. Um, not so, all of them can handle. Not all of them can kind of go that route. Is that sort of? I mean, do you, like the does the malt flavor come a little bit more forward? Yeah, it's is that like it? That, the, the malt having that malt there, um, and a little bit extra, especially malt, seems to as the hops fade because yeah. naturally the hop character right. is going to fade with with the hoppy beers. Um, but that malt comes comes up to uh, kind of balance it out, and uh, you know you get get this beer in a bottle, and even after three months, you crack it open and enjoy it. It's gonna be delicious. So.